Hey there, this is Fred Pasimo. I'm the host and producer of the Make Money and Have Fun show where I'm sitting down every single week interviewing authors, speakers, coaches, consultants, entrepreneurs, investors, millionaires, billionaires, you name it. We're going live every single week and you don't want to miss an episode. And one of the ways that I'm able to put this show on is through what I use to produce this show, which is Anchor. FM. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest and fastest way to make a podcast out there. Let me explain. First of all, Anchor is absolutely free. They don't charge you a dime for anything on Anchor. So it's absolutely free. There's also creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. And Anchor also will distribute your podcast for you. Check this out. This is so cool. It's one of my favorite things about Anchor. Anchor distributes your podcast to over half a dozen different places where podcasts can be listened to. So you might be listening to this on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, whatever your podcast platform of choice is, Anchor can most likely distribute it there for you. And you can also make money from your podcast on Anchor with no minimum listenership. It's everything that you need to make, an, to make a podcast all in one place. So if you haven't already, download the free Anchor app or Go to anchor.fm to get started. Once again, that's anchor.fm or download the app right on your phone. It's absolutely free, like we mentioned before. And if you want to start podcasting, if you have something to say, if you want to get started with your podcast, if you already have a podcast, this is the best and easiest and fastest option that I would recommend to anybody. Download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm. Hey, hey, you know what time it is. Welcome back to another episode of the Make Money and Have Fun show. This show in particular is a testament to the power of consistency and the power of follow-up. Because this guest, I asked him, I don't know, probably nine, ten months ago to be on my show. And can you believe it? He told me no. I couldn't believe it. But I finally have my good friend Ken MacArthur on here today. So I'm so excited to hear what we're going to talk about. So let's get into it my motto in life is make money and have fun i'm on a mission to show everyone how to make money and have fun i'm all about making money and having fun All right, so let's talk about Ken MacArthur. Who is Ken MacArthur? First of all, if you don't know who Ken MacArthur is, you must be like living under a rock or something like that because Ken MacArthur has done so many amazing things in his life. One of the challenges that I'm going through today is that I typically cap these interviews at about an hour, and Ken's life story takes just a little bit longer to go through than that, but let me tell you about some of the things. So Ken MacArthur is the best-selling author of Impact, how to get noticed, motivate millions, and make a difference in a noisy world. And he's enabled thousands of people to achieve amazing impact by championing the philosophy that partnerships and collaboration build value for everyone. He was selected by Fast Company as one of the 20 most influential people online. Ken's powerful call to action, the Impact Manifesto, you make a difference whether you want to or not, was selected for publication by Seth Godin's brainchild, Change This, which places his manifesto in the company of manifestos written by Seth Godin, Hugh MacLeod, I hope I'm saying that right, Guy Kawasaki, Chris Anderson, J. J. Conrad Levinson, Tom Peters, Malcolm Gladwell, and Robert Scoble. Most recently, Ken has come out with a movie. So this guy's a movie producer. He's a best-selling author. He, he was an uh, event producer as well as many, many, many other things. The list is just too long to go through it. So we got to bring this man to the stage. Let's all hear, Let's all put our hands together for Mr. Ken MacArthur. What's <laughs> up, Ken? Hey, Fred. It's so great to see you. It's I love, so great that, to I love see seeing you. your smiling face again. <laughs> I know. It's, it's like we've been strangers for the past year or something. What, what the heck is up with that? And you aren't even being robbed at gunpoint. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. I get to see you. In, in a place of mutual respect where we actually want to see each other. It's it's crazy. 
Uh, and what is going on in your world? Well, it's a busy life, you know. Um, I'm lucky I get to do all the things that I want to do, or at least I get to do constantly things that I want to do. Uh, there are so many things in my life that I, I really would love to be able to do. And there's just not enough time to get them all in. Hence, yeah, putting off the amazing Fred Pacimo for <laughs> six months <laughs> on, on the broadcast. But, but I'm really excited to be here now. You know, uh, you, you, you put a hole in my heart, Ken. Right there. <laughs> right there. That, that's where it was. Right through. Uh, like, well, I'm, I'm having a good time, but, uh, you know, focus is one of the, you know, you talk about having, uh, uh, making money and having fun and, uh, having focus is one of the key factors that you have mm. to do if you want to complete anything. So, uh, That's I've, I've sure. been trying to complete the impact factor movie now for quite a while and it requires focus. So, uh, I've been doing that, but now we're getting to the kind of the in stretch here. We're we're just about to start putting it out. I'm hoping maybe to have a private screening uh, in the Philadelphia area coming up in uh, a couple few months, and I'm excited about that and and That'll just so ready cool. to put it out there. Yeah, so 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 cool. So before we get into the Impact Factor movie. Let's just talk about impact first, because like, like you said, my thing is, is make money and have fun. But your thing has always been impact. So talk to us about impact. How did this get started? How did this kind of become your your mantra, your catchphrase? And, and just what does it really mean to you, I guess? I guess, uh, you know, impact for me started uh, <laughs> the, the first time I ever learned about impact was when I was in high school. So long, long uh, time ago uh, in a far distant world, uh, there was this teenage boy that really didn't uh, know anything about anything, but he uh, wrote music, uh, used to play a guitar and make up original songs, and he'd sit around living rooms, and uh, and the, the local girls would be there, and I'd make them cry. Uh, but it wasn't, it wasn't the girls that actually taught me about impact. It was a guy, his name is Tom Boyd. Uh, he was the football hero. He was the leader of the class, you know. He was on the student council. He was the guy that was destined to go off and change the world. He'd already been accepted into the uh, Air Force Academy and hmm. was, was on this route that was just straight up. And one night, he just happened to be in one of those living rooms, and I... Uh, sang my sad songs and made the girls cry. And uh, I, I'll never forget, I walked out on the porch of that house after that, and he said to me, uh, you changed my life. Hmm. And I thought, wow, I mean, this guy's the football hero. He's going into the Air Force. What's going to happen to him in his future? I don't think for a moment that I changed his life just by singing some song. But what if I did? Hmm. What if I did? What kind of impact could that have? And at that moment, I thought, you know, it only takes one life to make a life worthwhile. Uh, and if you can change one life, uh, that's a pretty ma amazing accomplishment because that ripples around. I mean, what if he was on a battlefield somewhere around the world leading troops into battle and made some kind of a decision that impacted those lives and and impact just goes on and on and on so that was my first lesson in impact but i've been around so long i've had lots of uh, lessons in impact i was doing a series of live events all over the world that had some of the top marketers in it and i would see people come to those events uh and their lives would be changed they would meet somebody they would make a connection they would develop a relationship. <clears throat> they would learn some techniques, and it would change their life. And I suddenly realized that no matter how hard I told people, nobody, no matter how hard I put the emphasis on it, no, no matter how I yelled and screamed and and over exaggerated, there is no way that I could get anybody to realize uh, the fact that we all have an impact. And mm. that impact is huge. Just by existing, you impact thousands of people. And if we use the art, science, and technology that we have 
available to us to leverage that impact, we can literally impact millions of people. And the world needs that because right now it's a noisy space, you know. Uh, there's 7 billion people on the planet. We think that we don't make a difference because, you know, how do you, cra how, how do you crash through all that noise and, and actually right. impact somebody? But the truth is that if you can just impact one person, small acts of kindness that make a huge, huge difference to that particular person, that impacts another one, another one, another one. And that impact just goes on forever, well beyond our life. That's amazing. It's amazing. So do you think it's, it's easier to impact people today with technology, or do you think it's harder? Uh, that's or a good question. That's a good question. I, I, I think all real impact comes person to person. Mm. So, uh, so we can, we can, with intention, we can impact somebody every single day. I mean, when I was researching for this movie, I was, uh, driving an Uber around the badlands of Philadelphia. And I was meeting people every day and you'd think you can't, you can't impact anybody as an Uber driver, right? <laughs> Except for that young lady that was, uh, had a, probably a two year old on her, on her arm and then was pregnant with another child. And she'd got hooked on oxycodone because of a C-section that she had with her first pregnancy and her life had just gone downhill, downhill, downhill from there. And she just needed somebody to talk to for a day, you know, just for an hour on a on an Uber ride as she was going to her rehab. And those kinds of impacts are, are impacts that are just the same now as they were in the caveman days, you know. Yeah. But But the downhill side of it is that, just by saying negative things uh, and broadcasting them out to millions of people and building up all of the differences that we have and, and polarizing people in ways that, um, that impact thousands and thousands of people, that kind of impact can keep going. So just like you put up on the screen, I've been yep. saying for a long, long time, it's not a good news message. It's an impactful message. We all make an impact whether we want to or not. So it would be nice if we didn't make an impact. Uh, you could uh, yell at Fred all you wanted to. You could tell him exactly what you thought. It wouldn't make any difference to Fred. You could kick the dog if you wanted to. It wouldn't make any difference. But the truth is that uh, we'd like to think that when we do nothing, Nothing happens. I hear that all the time in sales presentation. So, you know, they'll get the audience going right. and they'll say, uh, they'll say, what happens if you do nothing? And the audience yells back, nothing. Well, nothing could be further than the, from the truth because when we do nothing, horrendous impact happens, you know? So, so it's just like a house. Uh, you've done a lot of work in, in uh, real estate investing and stuff like that. Uh, if you neglect the house and you do nothing with a house, it slowly falls apart. That right. same thing is true with with the relationships that we have. It's true for the mother who does nothing with her child. Uh, and that kind of impact just goes from generation to generation. We see that in cycles of child abuse. We see that in teen suicide. Uh, we see that uh, just travel through families, you know. A person who thinks their life is entirely worthless and decides to take it has no idea of the impact that they're having on their parents or the people that uh, that knew them, the friends. The all of that impact is is more than we can possibly imagine. That goes on for years and years. Exactly, exactly. It's it's interesting looking at impact because impact is so so neutral. Right. Like you said, it can result in something, you know, horrific or, or very negative, And it can also result in things that are very positive as well. Do you have any kind of, I guess, like tips or advice on how to to impact people positively? Or, or is it kind of too subjective to, to really realize what kind of impact <laughs> you're having on somebody? Um, you know, a lot of what we experience in life is really self-based and it's it's self-centered. <laughs> The biggest thing that the biggest thing that we can do if we really want to have an impact, I think, is to listen to people. Mm. Uh, so many times we don't listen to anybody. 
You know, we just, I'm sitting here yakking away. I'm telling you what I think. Uh, and I haven't asked Fred, you know, what do you think about this stuff? You know, how, how has, um, how have you been impacted in your life and, and how has somebody come in to your life and really made a difference? Uh, if we watch and we listen to what's actually going along, uh, not what people are saying, you know, there are so many people out there that are trying to lead and we're paying attention to what they're saying when sometimes we should be paying attention to what they actually do. Um, and if we really want to have an impact in somebody's life, we should listen to them because they can tell you better than anybody else what they need, how how to have an impact. The, the easiest way that you can have an impact is to make something better in the world, you know? If you just make something better than it is right now, you've had a positive impact, right? Exactly. And that, that impact could be anything, but you have to listen to what that impact is. So what kind of impact do you want me to have on your life today, Fred? <laughs> Ken, I just want to have fun today. That's all I do on this show. It's, <laughs> it's just about, it's about laughing. It's about having a good time and just chatting, man. You, you have such an interesting life story. And, and the funny part is every time I ask you about your life story, you always give me a different chunk. And there's all these different pieces, like you were, you were a, a pet store owner, you were a cop, you were so, something to do with the military at some point somewhere. It's, it's just, it's so fun to look at. But I got your book right here. So this, I think, oh, is, your, yeah. is your first one, Impact. Tell us about this book, Ken. This is, uh, this looks like a super cool book. <laughs> well, I wrote that book because uh, of what I was experiencing at my events and and how we all make a difference. And then I got to thinking about how can we leverage those kinds of uh, things. And I still read that book. I, it's still sitting over there behind me somewhere. If I got out of the way, there's there's actually three copies over there nice. of books that I've written. Uh, <clears throat> one's in Chinese, so I have never read that book. <laughs> That's awesome. Did you ever think about learning Chinese just to read that book? Just to read that book, that that would be an undertaking for sure. <laughs> uh, I would love to be able to re uh, read Chinese. And I think that somebody could actually do that if they wanted to put their mind to it. Sure. It's amazing what we can do if, if we have the time and, and put in the effort uh, so to do that. But I still read that book every, every uh, so often, put, keep it close by because it reminds me of the things that I should be doing. It reminds us that we all make an impact. Uh, in that book, I talked about a story about Juan Man. I don't know if you ever heard the story of Juan Man. I don't think so. This sounds like a new story <laughs> from you, Ken. It's an old, it's an old YouTube story in a way. Um, there was a, a guy who was from the UK and he went to Australia to live. And he was separated from his fiance and he was feeling kind of lonely. And one night he went to a party. And somebody there uh, gave him a hug to kind of cheer him up, and it made him feel a little bit better. And the next day, he went down to the local mall, and he held up a sign that was on a piece of cardboard and said, free hugs. Hmm. And everybody looked at him kind of weird because, you know, it's kind of weird to see a guy, uh, especially back then, holding up a sign that said free hugs on, on the sign. But eventually there was a little old lady that uh, came up and gave him a hug. And and uh, then other people were joining in and more people were joining in. Well, he could have just stopped there, you know, and that would have been a good feel good kind of a thing. But the next day he decided to go back to the mall and then he went back to the mall and then he went back to the mall. You know, so, so many times we just stop doing something uh, that might be doing us good or, or a project maybe that we're working on. Uh, but if you actually persist in doing something over a period of time, you'll be amazed at the impact. So he kept going. And one day there was a guy who worked in another one of the stores. He was a struggling musician and he wanted to make it big with his rock band. And he saw this guy out here giving free hugs and he thought it was kind of cool. And he pulled out a video camera and he did a video of it. And then he went away. He went away to the United States, to America, to to um, uh, seek his fortune as, as a rock star. So, so when when um, uh, time went on, uh, the guy was feeling lonely in Australia, and he 
he just happened to write a note, an email to his friend in America. And uh, he wrote, he, he got together, the guy in America got together with his band and they put music to the videos that he had hmm. done of him, um, <clears throat> of him giving out the free hugs. And that music video, uh, he posted that day on YouTube. And it caught on like crazy. It did millions and millions and millions of views. Wow. Uh, and over time, that video has had more impact than you can possibly imagine. Uh, it, mm. it actually uh, caused uh, things like governments all over the world to, to do amazing things. Uh, the, uh, uh, the country of France... Uh, did a free hugs day because uh, they wanted to raise awareness that you could actually go up and hug somebody who had AIDS, you know? And so millions and millions and millions of people came out of that, uh, out of just somebody going up, holding up a sign uh, and uh, giving out free hugs. That's crazy. Uh, yeah. They're I still remember. going on to this day. There's free hug yeah. movements all over the world. It's interesting because if we if we roll it back to impact, which is basically what we've been talking about, you, you see how like the simplest, smallest thing just propagates and, and grows and grows and grows geometrically into something that can become huge. I remember, uh, I guess, I don't know, it was probably 10 years ago, I, I was watching the news. I never watched the news, by the way. I don't know yeah. why, but for some reason I was watching the news. And for some reason on the news, it was not anything negative. It was not murders or suicides of that week or anything a like miracle. that. miracle. <laughs> yeah. It was, it was this weird moment, which I guess I was like destined to have for some reason. And there was a guy in center city, Philadelphia who uh, went downtown and sat in the train stations and, or actually, I don't, I don't even know if he was from Philadelphia, but he was from somewhere and he, and he set up a game of connect four. And he just played free games with people in there. And the yeah. news finally like caught up to him and they're like, dude, what, you know, what are you doing giving away these free games? He's like, I just like connecting with people. And it was, it was interesting to see how something like so small as that became this, this whole news broadcast for, you know, whatever, a 20 minute segment or whatever the heck it was of yeah. just this guy playing free games with people in the city. <laughs> and he just did it every day for like six months and, and just seeing the impact of that and, I wonder where that went. You know what I mean? Looking at looking at the story that, that you just told, it's it's interesting to look at it from an impact perspective and see where could that go? What could that lead to? And, and what does it actually create because of that? Well, that's how my live events uh, got started. I actually went to um, a uh, just a lunch with a couple of guys that were working in internet marketing in the area. And... Uh, I thought, boy, this is pretty neat. We got to get together and we talked about things that our neighbors really don't know anything about. Uh, maybe I said, see who else wants to come, st come to lunch. And I sent out a little email to my list. And a guy all the way from Seattle said, I want to come uh, huh. to go to lunch with you. <laughs> I said, okay, well, if, if Frank Sousa is going to come all the way from, um, <clears throat> from um Oh, sorry, Spokane. It was Spokane, Washington. I always say it wrong. I don't know why. Yeah. Spokane, Washington, and uh, fly in just to have lunch with me. We should get together the night before and have a nat networking dinner. And then maybe we can mastermind all day long and then get up and have a breakfast before he goes off back to Spokane. And we did that. And I invited a bunch of people. About 30 people uh, showed up, including Sterling Valentine, the first nice. time I ever met Sterling Valentine. Now, out of that little thing, uh, that morning for breakfast, we sat down at a table and we discussed, hey, we'd like to keep uh, doing some things. How can I help you? You know, uh, and Sterling and I uh, started creating the process that would result in him uh, doing $100,000 in sales over a 30-day period because I wanted to teach people how to create information products, and he wanted to create one. Uh, so he made over $100,000 in 30 days and built a mailing list of 10,000 people in that period of time. Frank Sousa came back to my next event. Uh, eventually, we had another event. He met uh, Mike Koenigs and together on the back of a napkin, they actually scratched out a little business plan for Traffic Geyser, which did multiple millions of dollars over the coming years. 
I once had a, a, a 90 minute segment at w one of my events where I called Frank up on the stage and I said, um, <clears throat> tell us how, you know, this has impacted your life. And he went on and on about, you know, how much a difference that had made in his life. And then uh, I said, now has anybody else been impacted by Frank? And we called up somebody else and he went on and on and on about the support and stuff that Frank had given mm -hmm. to him uh, because he met the, him at, a, at this event. And then it went on and on and on. And, and by the end of the 90 minutes, almost everybody in that audience was on the stage talking about how one person had impacted another, impacted another. There were people that were literally alive on that stage uh, that would not have been alive if, if, Frank hadn't decided to go across the country just to have lunch with me. Now, I'm not saying that that works in every case, but but that's the power of showing up. That's the power of doing something. And when when you don't take the time to meet with somebody, uh, I mean, there could be somebody listening to this right now, and uh, and something that you or I say could resonate with them and it could impact their life, and that impact can just go on for years and years and years. It's yeah, that's so interesting. I, I always see now, like with with the amount of content I'm putting out, people reach out to me a lot, and they're like, "Hey, I love what you're putting out," and I didn't even know that they were watching in, yeah. in the first place. I'm like, "Wow, this is you know, there's there's something happening just for, just by consistently opening your mouth, by consistently using your voice and your words, you know, and and your message. I think that we can impact so many people, like you say." And I love I love your quote. We all make an impact whether we want to or not. I think it just it hits the nail right on the head and and drives it all home. So yeah, Ken, yeah. we we have your crescendo now, your 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 masterpiece, everything coming all together closer <laughs> to you know, took you took you what, forty five years before you actually did <laughs> this movie together? Uh, depending on, on where you want to say the start of that journey was. <laughs> there you go, something yeah. like that. So yeah, Ken, exactly. you got to tell us about this process. So, so you you basically you know reached up, grabbed the moon, and and pulled it down, and said, you know what, I'm going to do something bigger than anything I've done before. You've hosted these giant events. You you've met with all these people all across the world, had all kinds of impact, and then you're like, you know what, I want to make a I want to make a movie. What kind of I guess was the the starting point for you saying I want to go out and make this movie and and getting it going. I guess it's uh, exploring all the different uh, ways that we can use technology and everything else. Uh, I've always been a movie fan. Uh, I love it because it can grab you on an emotional level. It can grab you on a visual level. It can grab you on a sound level. You know, so it puts all of those different uh, parts of media, all the things that I've been building. I mean, I've been a songwriter. I've been, uh, I've got a master's degree in music, and and mm -hmm. I've led orchestras and all kinds of things like that uh, just to uh, get music out there. And that's just sound, but you can add um, visuals to that. You can add a story to that. And uh, a movie is a powerful thing. So I started working on that. It's a long, long process. Uh, I worked with a three-time Academy Award-winning screenwriter and producer to kind of uh, help me mold the script that I was writing for it. I brought together over 3,000 filmmakers in the Philadelphia area into a group so that I could learn more about filmmaking and and get to know them and build relationships that would make it possible for me to make the film. I put together a social media team that has almost 500 people in it right now ready to publicize the movie. I uh, started building out with no budget just to um, a beat up laptop and a dream as Sterling Valentine would have said at the start of his campaign, uh, trying to go out there and make a, a, a bigger impact to get this message out. Cause I think it's that important of, of a message. So the story actually tells the story. It was inspired on somebody that I met at one of my events. Um, he had, uh, started helping a, a girl, uh, that uh, lived in his neighborhood who was being extorted by a judge and and uh, and it was a, a powerful story that he told and I didn't try to write his story but I but it inspired me to write a story that uh, incorporated some of those elements so the impact mm -hmm. factor movie is all about 
help people within a five mile radius of Philadelphia City Hall um, live and work together. Now there's the power brokers of City Hall and there's uh, some of the most drug infested areas of the country within that five mile radius. And this movie shows how small actions really make a huge difference and how we can work together to make things better. So that's kind of the impetus for the movie. I love it. I love it. So making a movie, putting a movie together, right? I've I've written a couple of books. You've written a couple of books. There's a level of difficulty to writing a book, making a movie. Is it, is it as, as hard as people say, is it easier? (laughs) Is it harder? Is it, Tell, tell us about the process here. <laughs> well, the, there's good news and there's bad news. So the good news is anybody who wants to make a movie these days can make a movie, right? Well, that's good news. And and, and the uh, and the bad news is that it's so much more difficult than you ever imagined it could be to, <laughs> to make a movie once you get into it because there are so many things that you have to do. I just mentioned all the different facets of, of that. There's storytelling, there's um, there's technical stuff, there's visuals, you know? How do we make it look good? How do we make it sound good? Is there music involved in it? Uh, we have a, a wonderful uh, original um, music score for the film that was written by Michael Ingeser, who is an award-winning film uh, composer. Mm. Uh, and he put in over a year of his life, <laughs> not, not full time, but you know, I, I would think a, a good full time job. Sure. Uh, just composing all of those music cues. There are, there are literally hundreds of music cues in the movie. Um, I put in uh, some original songs that, uh, that I wrote decades ago <laughs> and those things were reworked. And, and they're and, still good. And, uh, and and so uh, we pulled together actors. We had uh, thousands, literally thousands of people who wanted to be in the film. Uh, one of the few people that got in the film was Fred Pasimo, but <laughs> that's me. But there were literally thousands of people that wanted uh, that wanted to be in the film, uh, and we were lucky enough to have some really great actors uh, that uh, are are in the film. I'm really excited about that. Our cinematographer, uh, 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 a young man that uh, has all kinds of amazing expertise, and we got to uh, do a a really um, quick production <laughs> all before sure. COVID hit. <laughs> yeah. Too, it, it, it was interesting for me walking into this process. You know, I, I've, I've always been a, a big theater goer. I've always been a huge movie buff my whole life, and walking into the process to actually be part of a, a feature length film and, and to to see kind of behind the scenes how it all works and help you scout out locations. It was, I think, it was exactly what you say. It was it was amazingly fun and and really cool to do and so much more work than I ever anticipated. I'm like, wow, this is overwhelming <laughs> to the, to the nth degree. And, and I just give you total kudos, like to, to dig through it and, and make your way out of it. Basically, whatever it is a year later, a year and a half later, however long you were, you know, producing this whole thing. It's, it's amazing. It's uh it's super cool. Yeah. We had to put together a, a Kickstarter campaign to raise the initial funds for it. And then there's the the hidden secret of Kickstarter, which is that you don't get all that money. <laughs> so right. um, we raised over $26,000, and I think we managed to pull in about $16,000, which is oh. not enough money to actually do a movie. Everybody told me it was impossible. So, uh, yeah. so I went ahead and, and did it anyway. And... Um, <laughs> So now we're trying to raise a little bit of money right now to try and make sure that we can get this out to festivals and to distributors and do all the deliverable stuff that we have right. to do and raise awareness for it. So we've got a little uh, kick st- or, uh, Indiegogo campaign that's going on right now so people can actually get access, early access to the movie. They can uh, may come join us for that uh, theater uh, pre-screening that we're doing in a few months here. And um, 
if people are interested in, in uh, checking that out, they can just go to impactfactormovie.com forward slash perks, and we will uh, definitely uh, hook them up. <laughs> and they can help uh, make sure that, you know, this movie gets out to the people that it needs to get out to. Because Definitely. if uh, if you make a movie and nobody sees it, it's something like that tree <laughs> falling in the forest or something like that. Something. I we think don't want it, that to happen. It's it's funny because my, my first book, I always tell this story. I wrote my first book when I was 21. There it is. And I've, I've given away more copies of this than I've sold at this point. Yeah. But it's also not nearly as daunting of a task as, as making a movie and not nearly as expensive <laughs> as, <laughs> as making a movie can be. So, you know, if you, if you write a book and not that many people see it or read it, it's not as big of a deal, but we got to get this movie out there. We got to let people know about it, especially because I'm in it. That's right. Like, why, why would you not <laughs> want to see a movie with me in it? It's this so funny. The start of your film career here, Fred. I, I got I got an email the other day from some guy Martin uh, Scorese Scor, 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 something like that. I, I don't know how to pronounce it, but you know, he looks like some fraud or something. You know, sending me something. Well, check with Steven Spielberg and see if he's right. up to yeah. stuff. I'll, I'll, I'll give him a call and see see what he thinks about this this guy. I don't know some some kid somewhere. Who knows? Yeah. But uh, but yeah, no, it, you did a great job in the movie. Right. You really did. You, you nailed that scene, and uh, it was an important one. So I was really thankful for that. It was interesting trying to explain to people the scene. Like when people ask me, like, well, what'd you do in your scene? I'm like, well, it kind of is sort of important, and it kind of is like the hinge pin of the entire movie <laughs> in there, but it's also very hard to explain without telling you the entire movie <laughs> of there. <laughs> And it's the like, funny here here's one of the interesting trivia for you Fred you're you're in the only scene that's in the movie twice <laughs> hmm interesting yeah okay. so you're in you're in the movie twice slightly different each time but right uh, yeah. we, we changed the lighting changed my hair <laughs> I was behind the scenes quite a bit though so that yeah helped. you were you were great behind the scenes we had a lot of uh volunteers that that helped out on set and uh that was a fun process for people that wanted to to learn about filmmaking to get started you know we had over 60 actors in this uh film can you can you believe that over 30 what, locations what did you film it in 20 28 days or something like that of, of filming it was actually it was supposed to be a 16 day shoot and we did it in 13 wow <laughs> so, holy, holy. Jeez. So that's pretty amazing. So what were some of your biggest takeaways from going through this whole process of, of making a movie? You know, it brought back to, uh, to me a little bit of the time when I was preparing to get my master's degree, mm -hmm. which was the last huge task that I took on, which was like an extended thing that you had to work on really hard. And I had a thesis that I had to do with a big concert. And then I had to do a musical analysis of the uh, two requiems. And uh, it was like modal chants and all kinds of stuff that I had to know about. Uh, all this esoteric stuff. And I never knew there was that much detail in anything, you know. Right. And it kind of opened up my world a little bit. Because by the end of that process, digging that deep, I knew more about requiems than uh, the the uh, person who headed the entire department at the college that I was at, you know, because of narrow focus. You know, if I just focused in on one thing, you can learn more about that one thing than almost anybody on the planet. Well, the same thing is true of, of movie making and every element of movie making. So when you take on a big project like this, it's it's really easy to get overwhelmed. I mean, I feel a little bit overwhelmed right now just because there's so many things that have to be done in the next three months that it's hard for me to imagine that they can all get done. But uh, I'm a big fan of one step at a time. You know, you just focus on the things that you can do right now. I'm sure. waiting on some people. A lot of people spend all of their life waiting. They're waiting for somebody to finish something and they, they don't get it done or they say they can't come through. Uh, I've had that happen a, a couple of times here in just the last few days of things that I was kind of counting on, you know, that I wasn't going to have to do myself. 
And they said, you know, I, I really can't do it. I don't have enough time. And I'm thinking, well, I have lots of time. <laughs> no, I wasn't thinking that. <laughs> so sometimes it's easy to get overwhelmed, right? Sure. But but if you focus on doing the things that you can do right now, and um, sometimes people come through. So just uh, just yesterday, somebody else came through and uh, after a long time and said, hey, I may be able to help you with this. So you never know. Hmm. Just keep doing the things that you need to do. If you, if you break down any huge task into small little elements uh, and say, well, you know, what's it going to take to accomplish this thing? And then I also encourage people to, to do reusable modules. <laughs> you know, so there are a lot of things that are reused in this movie. If you right. go all the way back to writing the Impact Manifesto, which was basically where I started to say you make a difference whether you want to or not, then uh, that theme has gone through books. It's gone from the manifesto to books. It's gone into uh, the movie. And, and you can utilize modules of things that you build. So if you decide right. that you're going to that you're going to write, a, a, that you're going to do a movie and you decide later that you don't want to complete the movie, it's just not worth it to you. You can take some of the elements from that movie and you can turn it into courses or you can turn it into whatever. One of the joys of this movie is realizing that um, it's not about the end game. It's not about the fact that I'm going to do this tremendous movie. It's going to be everywhere. It's going to impact millions of people. It's that I know that it impacted the people that I built it with all the way along the path. Yeah. Because if I didn't know that, you know, I, I could kill over dead tomorrow and uh, you don't know what's going to happen, right? right? Every day is a gift. And if you're doing things, uh, I always encourage people uh, to answer two questions. The first question is, what do you like to do when you get up in the morning? And the second question is, when you get to the end of your life, uh, what will make you feel like you lived, you loved, and you made a difference? Because I feel if you get up every day and you do the things that you really want to be doing, uh, and you get to the end of your life and you feel like you lived, loved, and made a difference, that's a pretty good life. So every day I got up and I worked on some aspect of the movie that really made me excited. And then the next day I'd work on another aspect of the movie. And and then, you know, just keep going and keep going. And along the way, it impacts all of the people that you touch along the way. So I think every actor that was in the movie, that's 60 people right there. I think they were all impacted in some way by mm -hmm. being a part of that movie, whether they decide to pursue acting as a career or or it was just a fun experience, right? They had a, they had a good time, right? Yeah, who knows? I, I hope it impacted good. your life. <laughs> <laughs> what What would you say was your was your favorite part of working on this movie? Like, what was it the the filming of it, the the producing, the writing it? You know, what, what was your favorite? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> um, the above. <laughs> you know, yeah, all, all of the above. I mean, I think I think what I really like to do and. I've done it in all kinds of different areas, uh, is I like to make something out of nothing. Mm. So one day you wake up, uh, you don't necessarily have any money, you don't have any experience, you don't have any time, you don't have any anything, and you just say, I'd like to build this. Uh, one day it was a pet store. I wanted to build a pet store, and I, and I managed to build and rehab a, a, a pet store. One day it was a recording studio and I wanted to build my own recording studio because I wanted to be able to record my own music. That's a bad idea, by the way, because if you build a recording studio, you will never have time to record your own music. That's just for all you folks that wanted to build a recording studio. <laughs> so, um, or if you want to build a movie, whatever you want to build, uh, that's the fun part. Make something out of nothing, because mm. if you can take nothing and make the world a better place, that's a pretty good life. Absolutely. So let's look at the flip side now. What would you say was the was uh, let's let's put it this way. What would you say was the most difficult part of making the movie that you didn't think was going to be as difficult as it was? <laughs> I was pretty sure it was going to be hard, Fred. <laughs> so, 
So let's just take that part of the question out. I, I knew going in that this was pretty much impossible. And probably the most difficult part of this is to keep the faith along the way that um, that the, all of the people that are telling you that you can't do it or you can't do it for this or you're not prepared or you're not talented or this really stinks, uh, all of those people line up. Uh, because we love to be critics, especially if, if, if you ask somebody about your book or, you know, there are people who will say, oh, your book's fantastic. But there are people that will say, well, this is wrong. This is wrong. This is wrong. Oh, you, look at the grammar in this sentence, you know, and, and, and go right. on and on and just tear you, tear you to shreds. Well, along the way, especially if you're trying to do something uh, you know, in in a, a budget that's, that's as impossible as this one was, there are people telling you every single day that you can't do this, that this isn't commercial, that that your your story doesn't work, that you'll never find a film crew, you'll never be able to get a cinematographer, you'll ne never be able to get a composer, you'll never be able to get a distributor, you'll never be able to, it just goes on and on and on and on. So, Thank God for people who have support in their family and friends and, and people that lift them up and say, hey, you okay. can do this because if you didn't have that, it would be really, really, really tough to get anything done. That's and, um, you know, things are impossible until somebody does them. Exactly. I always think back to the four minute mile when I think it was Roger Bannister yeah. ran, ran the first four right. minute mile. And then like the end of that year, there was like 15 other people that did it as well. Because yeah. <laughs> we build up the these season. mental barriers and, and we think it's not possible. Exactly. And now we know it's possible. I mean, you can look out there in the marketplace and see thousands and thousands of films. Well, people have created those thousands and thousands of films and they weren't all rich and they weren't all Spielberg or exactly. that Scorsese guy. So yeah, wh whoever he is, <laughs> I don't know about him. Yeah. So let's talk to real quick, the, the aspiring movie creator, all the people out there that want to make a movie, what advice would you give to them? What, what kind of tips or tricks or, or insider knowledge would you give to somebody who wants to do what you did? Well, um, there's always the Larry Steinhaus advice, which is just, just go make your movie. <laughs> and, and, uh, and it is very helpful to have somebody on your team that, you know, that, that basically keeps saying that over and over and over in your head until you get so annoyed by it that you actually do it just to get them to shut up. But, uh, but, but the, I think, Practically speaking, you know, most people, when they're just told, go out and do something, they don't know what to do. And the way that you learn how to do things is, you know, we have the Internet now, which is just amazing. If you want to learn about cinematography, you can do it. If you want to learn about film distribution, you can do it. You don't have to pay a cent. If you don't want to, you can go down to the library and get on YouTube at the library and and just watch video after video. Now, does this make it easy? Does it make you a real expert? No, absolutely not. The other half of that is you have to do it. So uh, when I started doing uh, thinking about this project, I pulled together a group of film filmmakers here locally, and I wrote a script based on that impact manifesto. And we did like a what turned out to be like a three-minute almost info commercial for uh, cre creating impact. But what it did was it proved, hey, you can get through this process once. And I knew a heck of a lot more by the end of that process of what it took to get something on film. And then I could say, look, you got three minutes on tape here and it doesn't look too bad. It doesn't sound too bad. Uh, you actually have three minutes. Now all you have to do is multiply that times uh, 30 times and you got a movie. There you so, go. <laughs> so That's there all. you go. Yeah. It's just breaking it. those things down and, and making things happen. You can learn everything that you want to learn. There are books. Um, I love books. So uh, the, the cheapest way that you can find out anything is to get a book. If you want to know everything I knew up to that point that I wrote that book, get that book. If you want to know <laughs> the next 10 years, you can you can probably get the next book, and if you if you um, if you want to know everything after I wrote that book, you can watch the movie. There <laughs> and you go. 
coming out of the documentary after that, hopefully. So we'll see. Nice. So talk to us about the future of this movie. So so now we, we just got we got to do some distribution. We got to get you on Netflix. We'll get you into Hollywood. You'll be famous <laughs> and you'll be living in the Playboy Mansion after this, right? Uh, probably not. Probably not. <laughs> So uh, it's a good idea, uh, Fred, to have reality in mind when when you do these projects and have realistic expectations. You know, so many young people will go into a big project like this and and they will think that um, that they'll they'll risk everything in their life uh, to create this thing. Now, luckily for some young people, they don't have much and they don't lose much. And they're pretty much in the same spot that they started at when they when they get done. But if you uh, if you ramp up all of your credit cards and you never pay them back, there's a there's a price to pay for that in terms sure. of the, the toll on on yourself, your finances, and uh, and your relationships too. You know, if you if you don't get that stuff done, so you need sure. to have realistic expectations about what you're doing. Nobody should expect that they're going to go out and, and win the uh, Academy Award on their first film or that they should get into uh, Sundance. Uh, but but here's the here's the truth. I'll be by the time this actually screens in a theater, I'll be 71 years old. So if I can do it at 71, uh, you can do it over a lifetime. That's for sure. So. <laughs> I love it. So, so you're thinking like a like a, a fall launch, late summer launch kind of a thing for this, or are you not sure yet? Well, we 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 have we details, a num- Ken. <laughs> yeah, we have a number of people that um, uh, that are really excited about the movie, and we're looking at distribution options, and um, we have a producers rep that would love to work with us. Uh, all of these things. Uh, the the finishing things require funding because you know you've got to be able to deliver materials to all of these services and stuff like that. We're pretty well assured that we we'll, we will get on things like Apple uh, to be uh, you know those kinds of platforms. There are lots and lots of, of platforms all over the world now. Uh, we're less likely to get into something like Sundance or uh, uh, which is you know like hitting the lottery, especially if you don't have name actors in your film, uh, you're not likely to hit those those kind of benchmarks, but it will be widely available to anybody that wants to watch it on major platforms. So I'm pretty confident about that. We'll also be able to do some theater uh, stuff. So I'm, I'm planning the, the private showing for people that are here in the Philadelphia area, but we've already received offers from uh, around the country to, you know, to host a showing uh, in other locations. So uh, we'd love to have some theatrical stuff because there's no, nothing like uh, watching a movie in a movie theater. But yeah, uh, my big push is to get, um, you know, most Kickstarter campaigns come in uh, with estimates of when they're going to get done and they, they never meet those anticipations often by years. Um, I'm, I'm really hopeful that we'll be able to actually hit our estimated uh, delivery dates for all the perks of people that supported the film. Uh, so I'm going to make sure that that happens. And um, and th- so that's coming up really, really soon. And we will, we will make that happen, at least for the people who are in the, uh, who, who support the movie, who actually go and get one of those perks uh, at uh, impactfactormovie.com forward slash perks. And uh, that will be coming up really, really quick. That's the, the big push for me now. So people who do that can have early access to the movie, uh, even even before it's reached its final state. And then when the full movie comes out, uh, we're in the process of doing some final things to it now, uh, the final color grading, the final sound design, uh, the final credits, you know, to get all of that stuff, make sure uh, Fred's name is in there. And uh, so all of that stuff is is wrapping up right now over the next uh, two to three months. And then uh, we'll we'll start s- submitting to festivals now. Uh, we will, depending on how many festivals or where we get accepted, we'll uh, be able to go all, around a little bit, hopefully, and, 
and to visit some of those places. Of course, it costs money to enter festivals, so sure. <laughs> we've got to, cool. we've got to be able to do that. But but um, but definitely, uh, we want to take a shot at at a festival run. At the same time that we're getting festivals, um, we've got a producer's agent that's going to be working on distribution deals, and we'll be evaluating all those deals for all of the other platforms that we have, and for distributing it to other countries and all kinds of things. So cool! That's awesome. Yeah. So so pretty much this this is going to be a, pretty much a worldwide movie, right? Almost almost anywhere you can. Oh yeah, can it'll be it'll out. be available anywhere. Nice. Are you getting? Are you having it translated into other languages as well? Well, we're doing all the deliverables, and that's another expense. <laughs> expense. Right. So I'm just trying and, to add uh, more onto your plate, Ken. Yeah. Th thanks for reminding me of all this <laughs> stuff that I have to do. There's all the artworks. There's the trailers. There's the all the different formats. You know, when you when you produce a a, a movie, they want a mix, and if you put it in a theater, they want you know, like a 5-1 mix, which is all the surround sound and stuff like that. That has to be done separately. Um, and then when you go into other countries, they want things like uh, all of the tracks separated out uh, onto different things so that they can uh, do dubs or they can do captioning. Of course, we have to do captioning anyway, but uh, right. captioning in multiple languages. Uh, so all of the things that you would normally see in a movie that you would expect to be in English uh, need to be translated into that language. So one of these days, uh, who knows, you could hear yourself uh, spouting back Chinese and you won't even have to line. There, there you the go. <laughs> I can tell people that I know Chinese and they can watch. The <laughs> Perfect. You know, you're, you're just yeah. setting me up for success here, Ken. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I love it. I'm, so I'm trying. So, we're we're hitting we're hitting close to an hour here, but I, I want to kind of wrap you up here with this one question. What would you, how would you say that that you feel now? Now that the the you know the bulk of the work for the most part is kind of coming oh, yeah. to a close, it's <laughs> concluding, you know, and and you're starting to see this this vision come to fruition. How does that make you feel? You know, um, every day that I get up is a good day. Every, every, every day that I'm alive. I've had a couple of experiences now at this point in the life, in my life when I wasn't sure that I was going to make it through the, the next uh, three months, you know. And nobody really knows. Uh, a lot of young and pe healthy people are out there right now uh, or aren't out there right now that woke up three months ago thinking everything was going to be hunky-dory. And uh, so every day I get up, is a wonderful, wonderful opportunity to have more impact, and and I think we all want to, uh, I think we all want to have a significant life, you know, have a life that that matters. I'm really, really lucky because I've already figured out that if I die today, that my life made a difference in some way to somebody, you know. I would have been satisfied that those years and years and years ago, if Tom Boyd had had a better life because I had said something to him that made his life better. Uh, interestingly enough, I ran into him again over Facebook. I haven't asked him how much it's changed his life, uh, but but he did uh, back the movie. So. <laughs> nice. There you uh, go. I love that. Yeah, <clears throat> and, and we were able to have a relationship, probably more of a relationship than we had in, in high school. So, you know, mm. that's, uh, that's how things can come around. But over the years... Um, I've seen the tremendous impact that anybody can have, and we can all do that every single day. We can always give out an encouraging word. So, love it. I love that so much, Ken. That is absolutely, absolutely amazing. You know, it's it's interesting how everything just circles back to that impact again, and it's absolutely that, that seems so small. Like like I said, when I explain to people my scene, they're like, "I don't get it. Why you know why <laughs> why did you mess everything up, Fred?" And I'm like, well, you know, you have to like see the rest of the movie to understand how the whole movie falls upon this one scene. <laughs> and it just opens it up. And they're like, I'm confused. I'm like, all right, go see the movie. <laughs> That's right. Go yeah, see the movie. It's it's really cool. I'm, I'm excited to to know somebody, to actually have a friend who who made a movie and I can share that with people to actually be a part of this this project and this movie. And I was able to open up one of my homes to you and uh be a, be in yeah, the movie, that so that was that was super fun. 
So what's next for you, Ken? What's your what's your next big thing after all of this? Just sit Boy, back that's and watch good, it all? That's a good question, yeah. Um, do, do what Thanos know, did? <laughs> I, I'm not seeing the end of this yet, Fred. <laughs> What what I see is I see that uh, that we finish up the movie and we get things out to the backers and and then we try and get it out to the world and that's a that's a pretty big project in itself. I do have some other film projects uh, that I really want to get on to too. I I want to build a documentary for this and kind of show some of the principles uh, that I've been teaching all these different years um, to show how um, you can strategically leverage impact uh, to get your impact even greater. Mm. So I hope to be able to wrap up that documentary. That will wrap up my three film project. So I had uh, the three movies. I had the short film designed to benefit over 100 nonprofit organizations. That's out there and in the in the can. This one I'm wrapping up now and the the uh, documentary will be next, I would imagine. So, and that will be quick because you already did this one, you know. Three, 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 <laughs> I've been doing a lot people. of work on, on, on that for a lot of years, so I've got a lot of stuff sitting around, and we've been we've been filming for it for a while now. So nice, there you yeah. go. So cool, so cool, Ken. I love it. You are the best. I'm so excited to have you here. <laughs> Thanks so much for having me. I I really enjoy. It. I'm I'm excited about your future. I. I'm sorry that I won't be around to see it all, but I, I know that you'll have an amazing impact. <laughs> I love it. Ken, you are absolutely amazing. What is your your words of wisdom, your advice, or just the last things that you want to say to our audience today before we, we part ways? You know, take time, listen, enjoy life. Uh, take a breath. Uh, try to make something better every single day and consider that, uh, we all make a difference whether you want to or not, and you can have an impact every single day. It's as easy as giving somebody a kind word. Perfect. Ken MacArthur, you are the man. Thank you so much for being here. For everybody who's still hanging out with us, we will see you again very, very soon. Have a good one, guys. Thanks see so much. <laughs>